All right, so um, I think in this one here, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the player sprite, um, get that going, and then we'll probably work on the coins. Um, so we'll add in some more coins, and then we'll set up the um, ability to actually collect the coins, um, add them to the player's coins score, and um, that'll probably be the stopping point once we're done with that. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to clone my player sprite right now in case for whatever reason it doesn't work out how I want it to. I can revert back to the original player sprite until I get it fixed or whatnot. Um, so I'm going to go into player, double click into player. Now I've already um, got the sprites set up for the size um, that I need for this. So um, what I'll do, and we're going to have all the animations here. So the first animation, um, we'll call this one idle. And instead of doing each frame one at a time, like, you know, clicking here, add frame, open, select the idle, do the next one, so on and so forth, it takes much longer. There is a quicker way. So if we right click down here and go to import frames, and from files and then I'm going to click on um, idle 000 hold down shift and click all the way over to select them all and then hit open and it's going to open them all up but you'll see that the the first frame is still there so if we just right click on it and delete and there we go now our idle animation is set now with the idle um, animation uh, let's select it up here because you want it to be um, continuously going when they're just standing still we want to set the loop to yes we want to let this this animation just continuously loop um, and keep going and going and going for as long as they stand still um, so if we click back in the let me just move this over if we click back in the animations box and we'll add animation um, so we'll do walk next um, and then click on that and again, we're just going to come down here, import frames from files. Um, we'll come back here. Where's walk or run? I'm using the run. Um, I found that the walk didn't really show very well, um, but I'm going to call it walk. Um, so we'll open that up and delete the first frame. Now this one we're not going to set to loop because we only want it to run when the player is um, going right or left. Um, we don't want it to always be to always be um, in animation. So the next one, we'll add another animation, and we'll do jump. And then make sure you click from the jump animation. And again, import, and we'll come back here, jump, and select them all. Open it up. Delete the first frame again. Um, Next one, um, jump, so we'll do attack and select it, import, uh, attack, uh, we're going to open that, delete the first frame, oh, I didn't resize these ones, shoot, let me resize those and I'll be right back. All right, so... That's been taken care of. Let's um, select these guys again. For We were on hurt, right? No, we're on attack. Uh, that's because I have this open. Um, so I'm just going to uh, delete these real quick and then import. We'll go back to attack. And Yes, there we go. So let's delete that. All right, so there's the attack. Um, so we have what? Idle, walk, jump, attack, die. Uh, where's, let's add the die. We might have to trim um, some of the transparencies on these. Um, we'll see how it looks, but um, we may or may not. I don't know yet. Um, so let's die, and then we'll do hurt as the last one. So when the player gets hurt. And let's 
go back here and hurt. All right, then we got die, yes, attack, jump, walk, idle. Perfect. All right, so there's our character sprite. Now let's, if we go in, I don't know that there's much movement with the idle, but um, let's save that real quick. And of course it's, there we go. It was just, for whatever reason, wasn't responding for a moment there. So um, let's run it. Now our player should be there. So, I mean, yeah, he's moving a little bit, but he does turn. Now the walk animation isn't going, so we, we are going to have to set all that up for the walk animation and the fire animation. He's still got the those squares. We're going to change those. I've got an arrow sprite that we will put in place for that. Um, all right, so uh, let's – got the idle. So let's work with the arrow keys first. Okay, so we'll drop that down. So we want on right arrow key pressed, um, not mirrored. We want to player, and we're going to go into this player sprite, set animation, and if we just hit quotes, it'll bring down the list of the animations that we have for that sprite, and we're going to do walk. From the beginning, hit done, and we can just copy and paste this here and it'll automatically mirror it um, so and actually let's just again we'll paste it here for the jump but then we'll double click in um, and we're going to change this animation to jump that's done there fall through um, we will only use a portion of the jump animation so um, we'll set that one up later on so we'll have to come back to that um, and then player um, for the F we're gonna set animation oh we can just copy and paste again sorry set animation and this one is going to be attack done so let's save that and let's run it all right, so there we go. Now he's running, he's jumping. Oh, sorry, the mouse is in the way there. So he's firing now. He gets smaller there, so I must have done something wrong with the resizing. Um, but you can see that the bow kind of comes up. Um, so I'll fix that resizing a bit later. Um, now for the bullet, we're gonna bring in an arrow. All right, now I haven't really, so I don't, I haven't set the size yet for the arrow. Um, I'm, or I haven't resized that yet. So let's see what it's gonna, what we want it to look like here. Um, the height is fine, I think, at 10. Um, what if we double the width, 20? How does that look in game? So that might be okay. So we'll try that first. So, um, oops. Uh, the bullet here and uh, what was that that was 20 by 10 so let me resize that arrow and we'll bring that in i'll be right back all right let's try that so if we um come into bullet here and we'll open an image uh, let's get out there so the arrow we're going to do the 20 by 10 and i'm going to switch out of there now let's see how that looks yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Um, actually, could we? No. Well, eh, what? Maybe. Maybe try. Let's try one that's a little bit longer. There. Um, I'm just gonna clone it and in bullet two. So what if I just resize that to? Whoops. Yeah, to the width of thirty. And we'll do that. And I'm going to do um, spawn bullet two, just switch it real quick, and let's see how that looks, if that looks, oh, all right, we have to put it in, um, create an instance of it first, um, so let's just drag that over, all right, now we can run it, 
Yeah, I think that looks better. All right, so we'll go with that one. Um, let's actually, we'll just delete that bullet. Uh, wait. No, because I want to keep those instances. So we're going to change this to 30. Um, let's come back to the event sheet here, and we'll change this back to bullet one. Um, I'm doing this just because if I delete bullet one, um, all the other controls, it's going to take this line right out because I've deleted that instance, whereas I only did that for just one um, instance of it. So we'll just delete that, get rid of that. So that takes care of that. So now we have our player, um, and it should be... Um, that, yep, so it's set in there for arrow. Okay, so let's go back to the WASD. We, go, we have to set the animations again, so we can just copy here and paste. So, control C, control V, control V. We want the jump, control V, and then we want the attack, control V. And we'll do the same thing again for the gamepad. So walk. Um, oh, yeah, we already had walk done. Uh, jump. Uh, and jump. Um, now. I don't have my gamepad plugged in right now, but I'm gonna just gonna give WASD a shot here. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so we're good. Uh, we'll close that out. All right, so that gets the controls and the animations set up for our player. Let's do another group here, and we're gonna do coins. Um, now, real quick. Um, I think what I prefer to do here um, is that so I don't have instances, uh, I don't have to place the instances around this map um, in this one layout here. I'm going to put them all on a separate layout. So I'm going to create a new layout. So if I right click on layouts, go add layout. I don't want to add an event sheet. I just want the layout. And I'm going to call this one um, object instances. So we need a, an instance of bullet. And you know what? I'm going to put a coin in case we um, decide to spawn a, a coin, um, maybe like a, as a, a random drop after killing an enemy or something like that. So I'm just going to put that there so it's, it's in there for now. Um, I'm going to close that out. Now I'm also going to do another blank or another layout without an event sheet. And I'm going to call this one um, variables. Or no, sorry, not a layout. Shoot. Let's get rid of the layout. Um, I want an, a new event sheet. Sorry. And I'm just going to call this one variables. I just want to keep them all my variables onto one sheet, and I don't have to look at it with all the other scripting that's being done. Um, otherwise, what will happen is all the variables will come up on, on top here, and it'll push all of this down the screen. Um, for me, I just, I don't know, I just prefer it this way. Um, so we're going to set up, um, um, for the coin collection. All right, and then just for logic reasons, I mean, players collecting coins so we'll call this very we're going to add a global variable and um we'll just call this um collected coins and we're going to set the initial value to zero because when they start they haven't um, gathered any coins yet um so now we're going to come back to our event sheet and actually, I'm just going to throw this, drag the variables over there. Come to our event sheet. So under coins, we're going to create a sub event. So just hit S. If you click on coins, hit S. If you don't remember from last time, um, we're going to go to player um, and then select the, the sprited player. We're going to go um, on collision with another object, which is down here. And we're going to choose, where did I put those under object tiles? Coins. 
So when player collides with the object coins, um, we're going to first we need to we want to destroy the coins. Um, so object tiles coins uh, destroy. And then we're just going to add to the variable, and that'll be under system. So if you go under system, add to, and it's already there because we only have one variable right now. But collected coins, we're going to add the value of one. Now later on, if we maybe we we're going to have special coins that will have a, a um, you know like it'll increase their coins by five. It's worth five coins. One you know a special coin for that. We can just um, set up a new coin and then set the the add to of five and it'll do that. Um, so now if we save that and come over here and run the layout. All right. Let's jump up. And we'll jump up here. So boom, we got the coins, but we can't see um, that it's actually added that value to our global variable. So we'll just put in um, a HUD display here. Um, and then that way we can see how many coins we've collected. Um, so let's do that real quick just to finish off um, the whole coins thing. Um, but we're going to come to layers. Um, and I hope I did put... No, I need to put... Um, what layer did I put those coins on? On tile objects. Um, you know what? Tile objects. Uh, I'm going to put the coins on a different layer. Um, so let's create a layer and we'll call this collectibles. And um, we're just going to select these if we click and drag here. Oh, no, it's going to select those. So um, because they're on the object tile objects. Um, I don't I just don't want them on the same layer. So then if we select the coins, right click, move to layer collectibles. Um, I'm gonna do that for this one. Move to layer collectibles. Move to layer collectibles. Uh, move these ones. Collectibles and these ones. Move to layer collectibles. All right, so now we can lock that one and we'll click back into collectibles. And let's scroll in here. So we just hit control and use our mouse wheel and then click down on the mouse wheel. You can drive that around. And did I set the origin? What did I set the origins? I didn't, but I don't know. Yeah, I think I like it like that better for this anyways. Um, so let's... And we can always move them over. Um, hmm. Yeah, OK. So I'm just going to move these over with the arrow keys a bit. Um, it might even be better just to set the origins point to 0, 0. But anyways, because um, I think now, that, that now that's going to look kind of funny there. But I can move this over and this over. And that still looks funny, doesn't it? Whereas if I kind of set that there and set that there, that looks a little bit better. All right, anyways. Um, so if we click on this, hit control, and then click and drag out, it's just going to create another instance of it. So we'll put another coin there, um, another coin there, another coin there. Uh, let's just keep adding these coins here real quick, get them set up and finished. Um, nothing there, but I'm going to... Um, so what, maybe two coins up there. And maybe two coins there for the player to grab. This power up, we I still haven't decided what I'm going to do with that yet. Um, anyways, let's. So we've got, you know what, let's just click and drag, copy all of these ones, bring them over. And so what, maybe two there, and come on. 
drop these down here. And I just want one more. No. Uh, I didn't mean to copy those ones, but that's okay. So delete that, delete that. Let's make another instance of that. All right. Um, let's come down. They don't need... Uh, that's pretty good for... No. What? Maybe do we want to put some coins up here too? No, that's not. Um, all right. So let's... Um, kind of do a little bit of a, you know, try and trip up the player a little bit. We'll put some coins um, up here for them to try and grab as they're going across on the platform. And, um, you know, that might cause the player to accidentally fall off of the platform. Um, just give it a little bit of a challenge there. And there we go. So if they want those coins um, and... Coming over here, um, I think I'm good with, you know what, actually, let's do, let's copy these, or yeah, let's copy these guys. I want to do kind of like a, there we go. All right, and then the boss will be down here. All right, so um, let's lock that layer. Uh, yeah, let's lock that layer, and I'm going to create another layer, and we'll call this the HUD layer, and I'm actually going to um, the collectibles. I'm going to put them below the player layer. Um, anyways, come back up here. Um, so let's. Uh, you can't see the dotted lines because of this background here. You can't really see where they are um, on the screen. So I'm going to take that off. That off. All right. Now where are the? Okay. So the dotted lines are here. So let's just grab the object coins, and am I on the HUD layer still? No. Make sure that we're clicked into the HUD layer. And I'm going to bring that up here. All right. So this is just going to be the coin symbol. And let's add um, sprite font. Uh, you can just click out of that. We can leave it as text for now. I'm going to take off the snap to grids here real quick. Snap to grid. All right. So, um, kind of want it right about there. Uh, yeah, let me just put a number in here real quick. Um, and I can kind of see where's the text. There we go. Uh, let's see if I just put 12 in there. With, maybe bring it down just a little bit. I know it's being a bit of a perfectionist, but that looks pretty good. I'm just going to shorten that up a bit. Let's select them both. And I'm just going to bring it over again. And we'll just set the text box out to there. Bring it out a bit. Now, I don't know. I, I'm going to have to find a, a font sheet to replace this with. Um, the black, it's not always seeable, depending on where your character is. But let's go in, and I'm just going to put these back in place. And on the HUD layer, we just need to make a, um, a quick change here. Because if we leave things as is, um, it's not going to fall. Here, I'll show you. So let's start the game. See how um, it didn't? It doesn't show my coins up there. Um, if I come, oh, jump up. See now you can see it up there, but it's not following the player, right? So, in order to fix that, we're gonna go. To, um, you click on the HUD layer to bring up the properties for the HUD layer. And on the parallax, just going to set it to 0, 0. And scale rate, we'll set that to 0. Um, and then this will cause it to follow along with the player um, on the screen, on um, what's seen. See, now you can see that the coins are up there. But for right now, as you can see, when uh, it says 12, and it doesn't change when I collect it, because we haven't set the text to change according to... Um, according to 
uh, what the variable is. So let's close that out and we're just about finished with this. Let me save it real quick just to make sure we got that done. All right, so um, um, now to set the text and actually let's go back, we, let's just rename the object real quick for the sprite, for the sprite font. Um, so I'm just gonna call this, um, uh, this will be for uh, coins collected um, sprite font and let's put that let's create a HUD here add a subfolder and we'll do HUD and we'll throw that up in the HUD all right so uh, we need to come back up here um, we'll create a, a new um, event and um, for this we're going to do every tick because which basically means every second we want it to constantly be checking and updating um, that coins collected um, sprite font text area um, so um, if we come up here you know I don't know exactly where it is in here but if we just typed in every and then it'll bring up every tick there so on um, every tick we want the um, object um, from the HUD of the, the coins collected and we want to um, we want to set the text set text to the variable uh, oh crap what did I call that variable oh collected coins so if we start typing it in here collected you can see it brings it up just hit enter to collected coins done and that's going to be on um, every tick so technically now oh and we'll set the um, let's go back to the HUD here we'll set the text on this back to zero we could also set that through here um, um, on the start of layout just to make sure um, if we wanted to we could set it to zero to make sure that in case we were playing around and we forgot to set this value back to zero that when the layout starts it's automatically going to set that text to zero but I've got it there so let's run it All right, so now you can see that I've got zero coins. Come over here, do, 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 and jump up there, and it's updating as I collect my coins. Sweet. Now, I don't have any health. Nothing happens when, you know, I hit the spikes here. Um, so we'll take care of that in um, another video, maybe the next one. I'm not sure yet. Um, and we'll also set up the, the um, HUD for the health in the next video as well, most likely. So thanks for tuning in. Um, I hope the series is helpful for, your, for you guys and you guys are enjoying it. Please hit the subscribe and like, and we'll see you next time.